Seems like as autumn's progressing, there's just so many overcast days. Today's been so patchy with the rain on and off. We're actually up at Lake Winnipesaukee for a branding project because Kyle and I from time to time will take on videography and photography work. This is one of our last trips for the season. I can't wait to get back to cabin work and get moving into the cabin because we are so close. The weather really is so spotty and tomorrow will be sunnier though, so I think tomorrow is gonna be more of our adventurous day, but today I think we're going to explore where we are a little bit more, maybe canoe if we can catch a good patch of calm. We found a rec hall and it's filled with like pool and board games and stuff, so we'll just take it slow and have a cozy day. <laughs> Either way you win. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Chopping. Yes! What? Yes! 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 Wait, this table's rigged. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. 
So every page of this book has a different lesson, there's different examples, it's categorized by the way it can inspire you. So like this one has relationships and self-care, this one's got growth, work, and creativity. But I felt like this one really stood out to me because it's really relatable. So I'm going to read it to you. It says, there's a story in one of the author's favorite books, Art and Fear, and it describes a class of art students who are split between two groups. Group one would only have to make one pot the entire time they were in their pottery class, and if that pot was perfect, they would get an A, whereas group two would be graded on the number of pots they made throughout the semester. So make 50 pots to get an A, 40 pots to get a B, and so on. And then it says, guess who did better? Group two. Group one was so obsessed with getting its one pot exactly right that they feared making every single choice. What if a decision is wrong? They toiled and toiled, and they worried and worried, and they ended up making nothing because they had learned nothing. The one pot was imbued with too much pressure. Group two, on the other hand, learned something new with every pot they formed. By pot number 50, they were able to make the perfect pot because they had learned from their failures along the way. Pot 2 had taught them not to add too much water to the clay. Pot 29's lesson was not making the pot too thin. Pot 38 taught them that even a perfect pot can be destroyed by the wrong glaze. And this went on, pot by pot, until by pot 50 they had learned it all. So if you're a creative person and you have a project that you desperately want to perfect, you should embrace that you have more than one opportunity to try. Give yourself over to the process and learn as you go. After you've made all the mistakes, you might just learn how to make the perfect pot. <laughs> so I feel like that's really nice because there's so many things, especially with us like trying new things and getting so stressed about it. And like as I've been learning, working with a camera, um, just like really learning the process and embracing everything and each mistake comes with a lesson and over time like now I'm finally getting comfortable with it instead of like the first thing you put out has to be perfect. I feel mm -hmm. like you tell me that all the time. This is my exact, this is how I live my life. Yeah, it's Literally. so good. This is exactly, it's like, it's so funny because I want to send this to Simon and Noah. The colors this morning are incredible. Woke up and the sky was this deep gray and it has faded into a slate and it's getting more blue by the second and staying really cool toned. And then all of the trees around us are illuminated by the sun. We have one hike planned today and then we're gonna start weaving back towards home, probably making a few more stops along the way. But yeah, right now we're just packing up and we're going to be on our way nice and early.
On the ride back, we took our time, stopped in a few small shops, and shared some seasonal treats. Little did we know at that point how beautiful the moon and sky would be that night as we finished up our last big autumn adventure of the year. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was so much fun to put together and I hope that you're able to find a moment of peace or a sense of escape and relaxation when tuning in. Um, there are so many new faces that I wanted to say hello and for those that have been here for a while, you have watched me grow, make, and explain different infusions and holistic products. Clean products, be it something you're ingesting or putting on topically, is something I'm really passionate about because what you eat and being mindful of that is really important, but also being aware of what's going on your skin. Those things soak in, they penetrate, and they end up in your system. Having these pure organic ingredients is so crucial to overall well-being and avoiding chemicals and toxins in this world that is full of them. I began making a lot of what I consume and now I'm so excited to be able to share it with all of you. My small business, Lucid Lavender Co., is a one-woman show right now and it is dedicated to bringing you top-tier, holistic, handmade, and largely homegrown goods. I have over 40 products in my shop right now, ranging from sprays, to salves, to scrubs, to candles and jewelry, and the list goes on and on. And I wanted to give back and help you with the holidays coming up. Give the gift of wellness to your family and friends and to yourself even. So with that being said, right now through December 20th, you can take 10% off your entire order at Lucid Lavender Co. using the code HOLISTICHOLIDAY. And I will link that in my description below. Again, thank you so much for being here, for being a part of this community, and for all of the positivity. Wishing you all the most amazing week, and I'll see you real soon.